Hi everybody and welcome to this Home Learning Habits webinar. Uh, wherever this finds you all over the country now in these strange times, not at school but in the comfort and privacy of your own homes, trying to get to grips with uh, the new arrangements and life as never we've known it before. I'm hoping today that um, I'll give you some suggestions and ideas to keep you going, um, try and reassure you through these strange times, keep you focused and positive and, and hopefully maybe a little bit excited about some new ways of learning during these strange times. I think, I mean, it's easy to say, but we should try and use it as an opportunity to capitalise on the time that we now have and try and make the best of this very, very difficult situation. Everything is obviously very different. Um, there's no walk to school anymore, the bus ride, the lunches with friends. It's all very strange being at home and trying to keep on top of your work. Um, so this is what this webinar is designed to do, to give you some suggestions, to try and talk you through things. Okay, so we're working from home and developing new good habits. We haven't had time yet to get into any bad habits. So let's see that as a positive. So what we've got to try and do is think about what will help us to do better in this new situation. So thinking about the conditions, the cues, the triggers, the things that will help us to focus and spend a bit of time on some remote learning. So I guess we're looking for some CPR here. The next thing to think about is to practice what we're being asked to do by school or perhaps take up some new practice and set ourselves some intentions for each day. We're not sure yet how long this situation is going to take. So if we take it day by day and set some intentions, that might be a helpful way to navigate our way through what's going on. So the conditions, set up the conditions, practice what you're being asked to do. And of course, perhaps have something to motivate you. Maybe um, you're going to stop for a bit of Netflix at a certain time, a walk around the block, whatever it might be, a FaceTime, contacting and keeping in touch with your friends and family that way so that you're not um, isolated or too alone through this difficult period. So building a good habit, building a routine, everybody's tuning in to PE sessions on TV, anything at all that you can do to try and stabilise things for yourself so that you feel as if you've got a structure to your day will definitely um, reap rewards in the end. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, you might have to show some restraint if you're inclined to get on your mobile phone and idle away the time. It, try not to fall into those bad habits. Try to develop the new good habits from the outset. That would be my suggestion. So thinking about your condition, your workspace, it might be that you have a bedroom that looks something like this. It might be that you're sharing a bedroom and you're having to work almost at the kitchen table or the dining room table or on the on the sort of chair in the living room, wherever it might be. Try and possibly get outside if you can go into the back garden or if you have a yard or even just put a chair out to get some vitamin D, some of the sunshine as well. Try and make it work for you that you can read quietly somewhere or focus on some work, a place that will be of benefit to you. So you might have a situation like this. You might have a situation like this. You might even, and this really resembled my bedroom a bit more when I was your age and stage, you might have a little bedroom like this, covered in post-it notes and aid memoirs, whatever works for you. We're all very different and we've got to try now to help navigate our way through this new situation. Now, I'm a history teacher by trade. Um, my name is Carmel Bones and I am um, I spent a long time trying to get students towards their history A-level and GCSEs. And you're probably at that stage or heading towards that. Um, if you do study history, your teacher might have spoken to you about the five W's and a H, which you can see here. We're not talking about people in the past today, we're talking about you. So we're gonna look at who's involved here, why they're doing what they're doing, what they're doing, when they do it, where they do it, and most importantly, how best to undertake home learning. So let's make a start. Who's involved with this? Well, 
you are of course i put a mirror here for you to be looking at i know how much young people like taking selfies but uh, the idea of you being the one who's doing the work but you not being alone is very important everything that we read about how to get information into our heads tells us that uh, understanding is a very personal thing sadly and i wish it could be the case but nobody else can really do this for you you have to supply the mental effort yourself now i know that's easier said than done and in these difficult times it might be hard to keep motivated but i like to take inspiration from people in the past people who face difficulty and i was lucky enough to visit alabama this time last year and i've taken some inspiration from martin luther king who um, led the civil rights movement and had a terrible struggle and remained dignified and resilient throughout for most of the time. So here are some of his words. The importance of keeping moving forward. I think that's very important to remain purposeful and keep move, moving forward, setting yourselves intentions and goals, not beating yourself up if you don't achieve them, but trying to do little by little, bit by bit, while you're off school, anything is better than nothing. So do engage with what has been set up for you. You're not alone. So the first thing you need to do, and I'm pleased to see we're not using paper cups and string these days, is to make contact. FaceTime, email, Zoom, video conferencing, whatever it is that you need to use to make touch with your teachers. Your school have set up all kinds of platforms to help you all kinds of packages. So get in contact with them first and foremost. Seek feedback from them upon what you've been doing and get guidance so that you know that you're on the right track. And that leads into, of course, getting affirmation and assurance from your friends. You're all in this together. So maybe schedule a time where you can swap stories, share resources, show each other the work that you've been doing perhaps. And of course, family members will be only too happy to pitch in and help and check over things. There are all kinds of online quizzes with the answers there ready available. Your family don't have to be experts on all of this, but you can learn together perhaps and look things up and discover new things. So take this as an opportunity to find things out and um, make the most of this experience. If you're proud of what you've been doing, perhaps you could take a selfie of your work. This is a, a wonderful teacher at Pendlevale College in Nelson in Lancashire and the DT department here have the request a selfie idea. I'm very lucky to be working in schools all over the country all the time so I can see some of the ideas that teachers use and hopefully share some of them with you on this webinar. So if you're proud of what you've been doing and they're stuck up on your bedroom wall perhaps if you've made yourself some mind maps and some spider plans whatever it is you've been doing you might want to request a selfie and share those with your friends. So you're the one doing it, but you're not alone. That is very important to remember. Why are you doing all this? Well, I hope you've got your eyes on the prize. Ultimately, your exam results, of course, are what you're heading towards, but the idea of learning for its own sake as well. Learning is lifelong and it helps you to become a better person, perhaps a better, a better friend, more employable, you can help your siblings, your classmates, um, it can help you to be a better child, grandchild, whatever role you're playing, carer perhaps. If you're opening your mind to learning and you're taking on board new skills and new information at this time, then learning can never be taken away from you. So it's very, very important to engage with this and uh, it will all help with your future. So why are we doing this? We're doing this because really it's very difficult to just sit still. We've mentioned Martin Luther King's importance of moving forward. It's vital that you keep moving forward. And I'm going to show a little clip to you now about people who don't really take action and aren't very proactive. And you can see what happens to them. They just get stuck. So it's much better if you become self-regulating and more reliant upon your own skills and that's why we're doing this.
That's not good. Oh, I don't need this. I'm already late. Somebody will come. Anybody out there? Do you have a phone? No. Sorry. Somebody! Hello? There are two people stuck on an escalator and we need help. Now, would somebody please do something? Help! 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 <laughs> I don't believe this. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> well, there's not enough left to do, is it? Hey, don't worry about it. I'll fix it in a second. <laughs> he said he could fix it. <laughs> All right. All right. That's more like it. He says he can fix it. Okay, what are we doing? Well, what do you need to know is the first thing. You need to think about what you do already know and what perhaps you don't know, what you need to know. So pat yourself on the back and consolidate what you already know. Think about minding the gap. So think, what do I already know and what do I need to know? Now, if you're heading towards external exams, I'm thinking perhaps of students who are in years 10 and 12. You need to know the requirements of your particular specification, your exam board. What's the outcome? So start at the end. Think about the outcome. Think about the success criteria if it's a task that you've been set by your teacher. So it's the idea almost of learning backwards. Think what will a quality end product look like? So you're learning backwards in that respect and thinking about how to get there. So in terms of the requirements, what do you need to know? I've spoken to some students in years 11 and 13, and this is their guidance for when they were in your position. Make sure you know exactly the exam board, the specification, the code number, what exam you're heading towards. Possibly print it off, tick off the topics. These things will be on your school portals as well. Be aware of the papers and what's on each paper the command words, the question types, the number of marks available, and then practice, practice, practice. Remember we spoke about CPR, creating the conditions, doing the practice, and then hopefully you will reap the rewards. Using online quizzes and check tests can help. There's loads of stuff available on Bite Size, I'm sure it seems to be used universally. Seneca Learning, Hodder, My Revision Notes, there are all kinds of free work through example answers that you can look at to check that you're along the right lines. When do you do this? Well, we're all very different, aren't we? And I've put a link in here to a little quiz. When is the best time to revise or the best time to learn? Are you an early bird or are you a night owl? We're all very different. And I suppose these new strange conditions allows us the opportunity to play around with that and find out when you do perhaps work best. So I would suggest that you take this little quiz or you might know yourself already when suits you. But what I found in my guidance with students is to suggest breaking the day down into three component parts, the morning, the afternoon and the evening, and perhaps commit to doing some work in two of those slots and then have a third slot for exercise and relaxation when you reap your rewards. So when to do it is a very personal thing, but don't procrastinate. Try your best not to keep putting it off. Get going, get started. Do five minutes and then you can maybe keep going. Just get started. That's the key to this. 
where do you do it? Well, I've put down a, a floor plan here. It might be that you want to move around the house chasing the sun where it's lighter and sunnier, or you might prefer to work in the dark. You might want music, you might not. It's again, a personal choice. I would suggest that you perhaps make things memorable. And if you've got a tough piece of work to do, to focus on, maybe do that in a different setting or a different room, because that might make it stick in your mind a little bit more. And remember what you're learning now, you'll need to be, you know, you need to call back to mind in over 12 months time. So it's important that you try and make it stick in your mind and um, you using flashcards or you know, little, little post-it notes or whatever it is that will help you to remember what you're going over now. It's very important to take breaks as well and to get outside and get some fresh air. We are able to leave the house once a day, walk around the block, go for a jog, listen to music, listen to podcasts as well. They might be quite useful. Even if you Google what you're learning about and find a podcast that would suit, that's something that might help you as well. So where you're doing it, it can be on the go and that's perfectly admissible. Um, build that in as part of your routine and part of your habit, a daily walk, a daily bike ride, a daily run, whatever it might be, and perhaps listen to something while you're doing that. The big question then is how we go about it. How do you make this sticky? How do you get this information to stick in your mind? And there's lots of lots of suggestions for this. I'm just going to give you um, a few suggestions now. But um, one thing that's quite important, I've taken some guidance here from Birmingham University, is to engage with the information. Rather than just rereading or highlighting or copying out work, it's apparently much more beneficial if you do something with it turn it into a mind map or a picture or a chart or a series of emojis or a cartoon strip or a flow diagram or whatever it might be. So doing something with the information that you've been given and making your brain take notice as well. So as I said, maybe you're working in a different room or using different colored paper, something that will stick in your mind and make it sticky. There are some really good points on there. I've zoomed in on two, but there are six altogether, which you might want to have a look at yourself. Also thinking about problem strategies, problem solving strategies, I should say. If you're doing maths particularly, these are some problem solving strategies that I've taken by talking from students in year seven to 13. So if you really are stuck on something, here are some approaches that might get you off first base and get you going. Now, maths teachers often suggest that you um, show your working out. I would suggest you should show your working out regardless of the subject area. And if it's tricky, draw a picky. It might help to make it sticky in your mind. So drawing diagrams can help and is a great way of doing something with the information. Just going over and recognizing what you've already done is one thing, but it's not really the best to make it stick in your mind. It's better to just get yourself a blank sheet of paper and try and recall something. That's the best way to revise and get something um, retrieved from your mind's eye, retrieved from your memory banks from when you worked upon it. Try then to elaborate and build upon it. So start maybe with word level and then bring in some concrete examples, some words and pictures and try to make connections with what you already know. And rather than sit and focus on one topic for a long period of time, the advice is best to revise, review it and come back to it. Maybe later that day or a week later, space out your learning and you've got time to do that. So keep little and often, I suppose, is the watch phrase there. Mix it up as well. The cognitive scientists call this interleaving, switch between different topics while you study. So spend a portion of time on one topic and then switch to something else and then maybe go back. And that allows you to kind of make some connections and mental schemas in your mind so you can jump from one topic to another. And it allows you to sort of build, build these kind of bits and pieces in your memory banks. If you want to know more, some strategies for effective learning can be found. Um, on a group called the Learning Scientists, and they have all sorts of wonderful ideas that you can tap in on. And I've tried to kind of 
give you some suggestions of how you can use some of their approaches. Okay, I just want to round up now by giving you some tools, some ideas that might get you going. Bunch of fives, a keyword mat, and a summarizing pyramid. So if you're stuck or you want to try something new or different, these are three tried and tested approaches. Bunch of fives you might have heard about. It's popular on a Radio 2 um, show, Sarah Cox Drive Times in the evening. And basically what happens is you think of five, whatever it is you're talking about, five rivers, five chemical elements, um, five countries, um, five, anything that you're studying. Um, I'm just thinking now rapidly, you know, five plants, five animals, five trees around the subjects that you're studying um, and it, it, five different words for something. And what it can be, you can challenge somebody in your house. You can send a sibling away to do this or your parent or grandparent or whatever it might be and challenge each other. And of course, you have to draw up the answers already so that they have if they have gaps in their knowledge, you can fill them in and help them. So this is something you can work on with a partner. So it's a collaborative way of working, which is why it's so good and it's competitive and you can keep score and put your own spin on things as well. If five is too many, narrow it down to three. You bet you can't list three, whatever it might be. Just give me three, whatever works for you. Another suggestion is to use a keyword mat. You remember earlier I said starting with a key concept or a keyword. Well, you can use this. You can write the keyword in the middle there. And I've put etymology, the meaning of the word. You might want to look up the word and write a definition top left. If you're struggling and you think I can't come up with a definition, then leave that box and move on to one of the others and then go back to it. And you can use a glossary, which might be available in your textbooks or on your school's VLE or portal, whatever site they're using to support you. So you've got some different boxes you can fill in here and then hopefully get a sense of satisfaction from boxing it off. So that's something quite finite. And you might want to then take stock and think about your thinking. This is a really important way of becoming better and more efficient with your learning. Taking stock and think about what you're noticing and wondering, what you're realizing about your learning, what you're seeing and feeling, and then going back to whatever it is you were working on and filling in the gaps. Being mindful of the gaps is very, very important. Not just continually patting yourself on the back with what you keep on doing if you're doing the same stuff, but face up to the gaps. Now is the time, maybe if there's something scary or tricky that you've been studying, perhaps um, in year 10 um, or you know in year 11 or in year 12, whatever stage it is that you're up to that you need to go over, it might be that you go back to that and tackle something scary that you want to fill in with. Summarizing pyramids is uh, my final suggestion here. If, um, if you just draw out a template like this, or you can use my one, and I'll show you how they work. What you do is, and there's an, an Easter version, you can, I've created a few different ones because I'm not sure how long we're going to be at this. We've got a springtime one. I didn't really want to give us the autumn and the winter ones, but if you want them, I can supply them. But how it works, if you want to think ahead to the summer, we've got one there, is that you write on these little pictures here, whether it's the flowers or the ice creams or the Easter eggs, you write some information on these little pictures. So what happens is, as I said, I was a history teacher. What happens is you've got your pyramid and you've got your textbook or your information that your teacher has supplied. And what you do is you read it and you come up with some questions or instructions to try and summarize the information. So it might be that you make one of these for your friends and you share them, or it might be that it helps you to summarize and make a tower of power with what you're trying to get into your head. So here's one I made earlier, a Spanish Armada one. And you can see here that we had um, clues like, for example, use one adjective to describe the English or Spanish view of the outcome. Name the two leaders. You get the idea. So if you've been studying Elizabethan England, this might be something that you're familiar with if you're a history student. So you get the idea that you can apply these animations if you want to. 
Here's a maths version as well, the number theory pyramid. So you can be creative with this and use it however you want to use it, really. And I guess you might be missing your sport at the moment, your team games particularly. I've seen lots of keepy uppies with toilet rolls on Twitter and on Instagram and um, on Facebook. So this might be something that would appeal to you to write the words or the um, calculations in a revision goal pyramid as well. If you want to go further than a pyramid, I guess you could have a, a parallelogram here. A teacher I was working with came up with a parallelogram. So hopefully there are a few approaches and ideas. One for um, scaling the castle walls there, another history related one. And do drop me a line, keep in touch and share your successes. I wish you all the best as you navigate your way through this difficult time. If you want to follow me on Twitter or drop me a line, drop me an email. I will tweet some of your pictures of what you've been working on, if appropriate. And um, all the best and good luck with your studies.